Recently, Tessit visited Cirque du Soleil's Volta, one of the company's spellbinding traveling shows making its way across North America. In every new city it visits, this big top show unpacks like a small town, deploying from a caravan of 74 trucks not only its 2,000-seat performance venue, but the training spaces, repair shops, and technical facilities needed to keep the show running and evolving night to night. We went backstage as Volta was finishing up its run in San Francisco before moving to San Jose later this month to see the show's workshops before they were folded back up into road cases. Let's go take a look. So I'm back here with Sean in yet another tent that you guys have set up for this show. Um, and not only is this a tent, this is a workshop. Yep, this is our shop. This is the 54. This is the, uh, the technical careers shop where we maintain all of our gear. We have all of our spares, all of our tools. We all have our own equipment that we bring with us because we maintain the show ourselves. And we don't send stuff out unless we really have to. It's all taken care of right here on site. Back in Adam's cave, everything is on casters, but everything is on like super casters. Seriously, they also have lids because there's like nothing but road cases. Well, just think about it. We have to take every piece with us. So every table you see is a lid to one of the cases. Oh, yeah, of it's course. It's all on wheels. They're all planned to go in a truck. That You always have to think about how are we getting it to the next stage, how it's originally designed. So the, all these cases are designed to, for these specific tool cases that fit inside of them. They're called Rousseau's. Everything has a French name for it because it's a French Canadian company. And so two of these, when they're closed, can sit side by side and fit straight into the truck. And we just keep loading them through. When we load up the 54 trailer, which is what the name of the shop comes after, we will do it about half deep of just our tool cases. Now the 54, is that because it's like the 54th trailer? Yep. Every truck has a number so we can track it wherever it is in the world. Cirque can track every one of their shows, every truck they have, every piece of equipment they have. And the 54 is always the tech shop's trailer. That's where our tools go, our lockers, and once we get into the city, the 54 is the shop. So you know that you can meet in the 54, everyone knows to come here. Across all the traveling, every Cirque show big has top the 54. shows, you have a, a doppelganger in Japan right now for the yep. Karyo show in a tent similar to this exactly. with the automation department. Yep. That's really cool. And so your department's right here. Uh, you have your own set of tools. You don't need to go use someone else's tools. We have our own specific set of tools. If it's special to our gear, we have it for us. We also have like at the wrenches I like. I'm pretty particular with my tools. Mm. I spend too much money on them all the time. Uh, so I have my tools. I have, have uh, the shorter case is our tools. The taller one is all of our spares for the winches. We have spare motors, uh, encoders, limits, everything we might need. We're currently ordering a bunch more in anticipation for needing anything. Um, we also share a lot of tools with each other. Rigging has some specific ones that we have to use sometimes. Props has a lot of really delicate tools. Carpentry ha has their stuff. Lighting has a lot of electronic stuff that we might need. And we also share resources with each other. I'm more mechanic. If I need something electrical, I'll go to lighting, talk to them, or EMC, who's a, his job is all the electronic stuff that he works on by himself. You mentioned rigging, you mentioned props. How much specialty hardware is it? Because I see things like a sewing table that fits into a road case. Yep. Like what are the kind of things that you have to cram in for different departments? Uh, it really depends. For rigging, they have a lot of rope needs, so they have an actual rope case that they can splice rope together, cut it, solder it, uh, not solder it, burn it down so it's not spraying at the end, all these specials that they have. Uh, lighting and sound, they have a lot of multimeters, ways of testing uh, electronic signals. Video has a lot of stuff for fiber optics, things like that. Uh, props has all their sewing machine. As you said, it fits in a nice little road case. It gets packed up very easily. Uh, they are the most random department in terms of what special things they need because it's literally everything. Yeah. Um, as you've seen probably in Adam's Cave, like props is everything that you might need. Yep. It's all sorts of fabrication. You guys are doing electronics, mm -hmm. things that light up mm -hmm. in the show, hand props. Um, there's costuming, I bet. Yep. Um, and costuming is their own shop. They have uh, too much stuff to fit in the 54. Wardrobe is their own area and they live in the artistic tent with the artists just so they're closer proximity to them to work with them. They're always welcome. Everyone's welcome to 54, but they have too much stuff. They get their own space. Do you guys bring also like a wood shop or, for, or a metal shop for we, welding? Uh, the site team, our site team who do our utilities, HVAC, things like that, they have the big boy machines for welders, a lot, lot of metalworking tools, and we share resources with them as well. Uh, and you can always tell whose stuff is what by the color coding. So we always know rigging has the ropes I need. So I'll go to their blue cases or props is yellow. We're purple because purple is an awesome color. And that continues over to our storage cases. So when we're loading in, setting up in the city, I know my purple cases are my stuff. If rigging needs something and I need to go get something from them, I can look for their blue cases. This is a, it's a complex organism. Yep. Of it, and so interesting, disciplinary, right? You have every single discipline here. How does someone get into this business? What did you do in school? And um, I attended university for technical direction, uh, essentially engineering and business management. I attended Carnegie Mellon University for art school, essentially. I have an art degree. 
Uh, our degrees do pay off. I love to rub that in people's faces. Um, I've, I've always been in entertainment. I'm third generation. My uh, father and his father both did sound and film, so I was always around the environment. While I was in school, I got exposed to automation as a disciplinary um, field and just saw it's a really enticing, really exciting. I get to be really artistic and work with uh, acrobatics. So once I found that, I did everything I could just keep going into it. And as soon as I graduated, I went right on tour. Wow. And you get to basically get paid to travel around the world exactly. and bring this show to I am professionally homeless. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're paid to live all over the world. I have a place in Southern California, so that's why I'm, I love this show because we're in California for so long. But we, you get paid to be everywhere. You get paid to live in every single city, unlike rock and roll where you're only there for one single day. We're in each city for at least a month or two. And it sounds like it's never boring. It's never boring. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sean. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much nice for reaching out. It's a wonderful show. Of course. And I hope people get to see it. It's in San Francisco through early February, and the guys are packing up. Yep. In two well, weeks. Yeah, in two weeks, you'll see this entire site go crazy because we're going to tear everything down. In two days, we will be off of this site. It takes two full days for us to get completely clear. And you'll be in San Jose starting mid February. Yep. Yep. Hope people will get a chance to see that. Thank you again. Thank you to everyone here involved with the show, and we'll see you guys next time.